So what's up everybody? Uh, this is Jesse from BCC Board Repairs. Today we're gonna do common uh, iPhone 7 Plus audio IC repair. Now, um, if you don't know, this is a very common issue. Uh, you try to click record a voice memo and it won't play. It's kind of hard to aim that way. By the way, if you're watching, make sure you comment uh, what city you're in. I want to see uh, who's up in here. All right, so yeah, it's uh, audio IC definitely is bad. Also, if you have, um, I don't have a SIM card to test with, but if you make a phone call, the speaker button is grayed out. Uh, Siri doesn't hear you. Um, so yeah, let's get this solder magic started. So I hope you guys can hear me. I'm not seeing any comments, so, so who knows what's happening. All right, so let me get this uh, disassembled. I have all the screws out, so it should be quick. All right, here we go. I see some comments now. It's probably a big delay too. Hey, uh, Kyle, and then I see Joshua. What's going on, guys? Man, these Facebook lives are, are nerve-wracking. <laughs> yeah, the dog's in, in his crate. Uh, what's up, Blake and Jose? All right, so what I like to do first is actually, um, here, let me change the camera angle. So what I like to do first is take off this foam just cause it, it melts and it shrinks and it gets in, in the way. So let me go ahead and take that off. Uh, it's 941 p.m. here Pacific time so I wonder how many uh, East Coasters will be joining probably all asleep alright it says here Ooh, 17 people watching. By the way, if you're watching this, uh, feel free to share this uh, on your page or in the Facebook groups, the repair groups, if you want. Uh, what do you mean, Dustin? I don't know what you're talking about. Man, this sucks. The, the comments don't auto scroll to the bottom, so I gotta manually scroll. All right, cool. So, let's see. So yeah, back here is where the audio I see on the 7 Plus is located. So what I like to do is peel off halfway uh, the sticker, fold it out of the way, put a coin. Alright. So here is the audio I see, the bluish looking chip. <laughs> nope, it's not underfilled. So we're safe. By the way, if I end up with basement after this, I'm definitely gonna delete this live chat, live feed, and pretend like it never happened. All right, cool. Um, so I'm putting my hot air to 400 Celsius and 80 air on my quick 861. Um, also, I have it on a preheater set at 120 Celsius. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get this off the board.
everyone seems to have their own like weird little method for getting this chip off but I just do it the old fashioned way alright here it goes chip is off putting it off to the side so I can reuse it later So now some, some more flux. Where's my solder? So I like to keep a little strand of uh, solder nearby. Then I'm gonna clean off the old pads. And why the hell am I nervous? Too many people watching. Don't pay attention to the shaking. I don't normally shake like this. All right, that's good enough. You've seen enough uh, shaking already. All right, uh, so just cleaning this off cleaning off the old flux and then some isopropyl alcohol and my little hand pump clean that right off alright so now to do the jumpers so this is the controversial part for some reason um, but I like to do two jumpers um, and then, so I do C12, which is this one. And what I do is I scrape out the trace. That way I could uh, tack the jumper to the trace, to the resistor, and it's all like a solid connection. And then, some flux on here and then I also do the D12 jumper which is uh, everyone has their own little method so I have recently settled uh, to this so let me tin this so now you see the trace is tinned and then I'll do D12 and then G12 so it's like a little weird u-shaped thing so uh, let me try it and uh, thanks for the feedback Blake <laughs> so I'm trying to just take deep breaths and calm down but it's not helping All right so let me get some jumper wire I don't have any to grab some new wire over here I'm 33 people If you're watching, make sure to comment so I know you're there. All right, so let me do the easy one first. Can you see my shaking? <laughs> Man, this is, uh, this is awkward. All right, so I line that up and I rotate it so I could have my left hand holding it straight then with my right hand I'll hit it with the iron alright oops alright I bent the wire let me see if I can straighten it oh, you know what let me just cut it off and try again I bent this one too. Alright, uh, I can make it work. Let's do that. Alright, so I'm gonna hit it with my micro pencil. Alright, got a little bit and not hit the rest. There you go. 
All right, so I kind of ran the jumper straight across the pad, so I really can't do a little loop like I normally do, so I'll just go ahead and just keep it this way. So normally I'll do like a little circle to kind of do the shape of the pad, but, you know, got to improvise sometimes. So if you can see, it goes straight across the middle of that, of that pad, so. All right, so this is the the latest method I do, you know, for 2021. So I'll do G12, which is this one, to D12. And it uh, looks weird, but it works. Man, I'm shaking. All right, hold on. Fuck. There you go. All right, so let me just double check. So there's three NCs, these two, and then this one. So that's how I kind of know which pad is the right one. And then, so what I do is like this little, here, let me give you a little more light. So kind of create the little loop here. And then there you go. So I'll hold the wire just so I get um, some room. All right. Yeah, there you go. So now I cut off the excess uh, jumper. So I'm using my left hand tweezers to keep the blade from shaking. Alright, so here's the spare jumper wire. I put it under my work mat, a little Amazon baking mat, that way I can reuse it later. Alright, so I have a little uh, extra jumper over here, so let me try to trim that off. Oh yeah, that's a lot, a lot extra. Let's see. Fuck, it came off. Well, you know what, I'll just, I'll just do that. All right, I gotta re-solder it, kinda him loose. All right, so you know what? Any more solder in my iron? And I do plan on making more videos and going live and stuff. So you know, it's been a while since I've done this. There you go. Got it. I think I got, let me see, this one looks like I got a little extra. Let me try to chop that off. There you go. Take out that. Take that off. All right, cool. All right, so let's clean this up. So this is what my audio I see in 2021 looks like. It is two jumpers. Uh, I go from, so before I used to break off D12, dig out the via and then just kind of solder to it, but I had way too many warranties that I wanted to admit to, so then, I tried doing the resistor be under the shield, but then you have to mess with the shield and that looks ugly. So I had to settle with this uh, method. So can you guys see that? All right, so also what I hate about this is now I have to use the UV mask, um, which I right, so let me just bend this a little bit so it's out of the way. So, um, go ahead and rate my jumpers, one to 10. What would you rate this? Keep in mind this was live, my hands are shaking, and 
I don't know. All right, so, so what I like to do with the UV mask is I'll push out just a little bit and then I'll touch it with my, I don't know if you guys can see, but I'll barely put like a little bit on the tip of the blade. Then I use the blade as a spatula. So like, um, you can see I have like, uh, like you know that painter, um, what's his name, Bob Ross, how he has like a little palette of all the different colors and then the brush it's kind of kind of the same thing uh, so I also like to put it on the back side like this upper side uh, just because I don't want a giant um, what do you call it I don't want to get in the way once the UV mask solidifies and I normally don't put it on C12 either because that doesn't go anywhere so this kind of, this should hold it in place. All right, and then I have a little UV uh, laser. Um, and by the way, UV lasers are bad for your eyes, so make sure you never look at it straight. Uh, I have a camera on, so I'm using that to be able to see. Otherwise, um, I do have my UV glasses somewhere here. So, wait, oops. I was trying to read the comments while carrying this. Um, cool, so my average jumper score would be what? Six. <laughs> all right, that should be good. All right, so if you can see, there's um, like all the UV mask is on the upper side, so it won't get in the way of the chip. So this is my how do I see um, jumper. All right, so now put the board out of the way. Now let's go to the reball. So in case you don't know, reballing means basically redoing the balls on the uh, on the chip. Ooh, 35, 35 viewers. I don't think I ever had that many. All right, so we put some flux. We get um, some solder and then we basically flattening out or cleaning up the old solder to prep it for reballing. So, yeah, these are Ineasy tweezers. All right, so now I've got to clean off the flux. You always want to work on a clean surface, otherwise the solder won't stick. Uh, I notice a lot of new guys who are getting into soldering, they don't clean out the old flux, so it just, you just keep layering, layering, you know, on top, a bunch of nasty flux, and then, you know, things don't solder to each other. All right, uh, so let me get my little clean clean room cloth thing and I'll wipe it down to, to finish the cleaning by the way go to go to here I'll put in the, in the for all the tools I'm using go here support support the cause buy if you buy through those links I make some money I make some money I'll do more videos so <laughs> I'll just be honest here all right so putting the chip on the stencil I have um, already have some uh, solder paste on my little spatula tool 
and then we're just gonna so what I have to do is uh, spread it to the right and just like press down and push it into the the slots or the grooves or whatever the, the squares then I scrape leftwards scoop it all up all right then without letting go of my left hand then I, I kind of replace that pressure with my right hand with the tweezers and then using my little cloth that wipe down the top layer it helps um, just keep it even all right so now we're at 330 Celsius and 35 air and what I do is I'll just go in circles basically like warm up the area What paste? I'm using um, Mechanic 183 uh, Celsius paste. All right, you can see like the middle is kind of a little liquidy, so to speak. So now I'll, I'll just kind of come here at the, at the corner and just let it let it all do its magic. Beautiful. All right. Okay, so while it's so hot, so I'll push it through. Otherwise, the flux in the paste will get it uh, to stick. Then you have a hell of a time trying to get it out. All right, so while this is so hot too, I like to clean it so it's ready for next time. So it's ready for the next live stream, maybe. All right, so just clean that off. All right, this aside. Put that aside. All right, so let me clean this a little bit. See something about dusting, dusting, fingering stuff. I don't know what that's all about. All right, so let me dry it off. Some light hot air to evaporate the isopropyl alcohol. Put a little bit of flux just to finish off the job. And then also on the board, Put some flux to prepare it. Right. By the way, I'm debating whether I should, um, once I'm done with this, if I should post it on YouTube or just keep these as a uh, Facebook only. Because it's kind of weird, because if I put it on YouTube, I'm basically talking to myself. Uh, nobody sees the Facebook comments, so I don't know, kind of. All right, so uh, one trick here, like which orientation to put the, the chip. If you see these um, bottom rights, there's these two um, two pads that are, it's kind of hard to see on the camera, but there's like no traces or anything going to them. Those go on the upper right, upper left, sorry the ground pads so what, what that ends up doing is putting that arrow at the bottom left which is where it belongs so basically when I have the chip upside down I already know which uh, direction or orientation to put it all right so now all right so I basically lined it up as best I could um, <laughs> All right, so I'm going to put my hot air at 365 Celsius and 65 air. And this is actually lower temperature than I used to remove the chip. That's because I have lower melting um, solder on the chip now. So I don't need it to be as high. And I also don't have a preheater uh, on, on here as well. So. 
So basically I will warm up the area. This helps also spread the flux um, across the surface I'm working on. So I think it's too much to the right. So let me see if I can adjust it a little. So basically as far as aligning it, I'm just like eyeballing like the best placement. I like reference the gaps between the capacitor and the chip. And I try to give it an even look. So yeah, now I just, by the way, there's like a chip on the on the bottom side, but I think it should be fine. I guess we'll find out. Yeah, and uh, hopefully no baseband. That will truly suck. Or if I do get baseband, it'll just be a super long video of me doing baseband as well. So let's see what happens. Alright, so I'm kind of heated up this pretty well, so I'm just going to go closer. Uh, and you're going to start seeing the chip dance. Hopefully. There it goes. Alright, and then I like to go at it at this corner and just bump it to make sure oh, it's not in yet. There you go. Alright, so... We're almost at the grand finale, maybe. So I'm gonna let it cool down for just a few more seconds. I don't wanna scrub it and then like squeeze it and destroy it. So definitely wanna give it like 10, 15 seconds at least. All right, you can see the ice was bubbling, but that's fine. All right, let's clean off this old flux. I mean, it, as, as many audio ICs I've done, I mean, I don't know the number, um, at least 500 uh, or more, I don't know. I've probably done four bass bands, you know, through the course, so not too bad, I guess. All right, the board is kind of cool enough, so by the time I assemble it should be cooled down enough so power button uh, charging port oh yeah you guys can see this let me do this uh, let me plug in the cameras Wi-Fi antenna the cellular antennas at the bottom By the way, I'll probably go through this chat later and see if I miss any comments or link anything anyone asks about just so I get those uh, commissions, you know? All right, so here we go. Everything plugged in. Uh, also, what I hate is like so many times, like the very first second it boots up it'll say searching and then it disappears and then and then it says no sim which is I don't know why it does that but after that it just works perfect so let's see all right so moment of truth so I have it here on the bottom left camera All right, guys, almost there. 34 viewers, let's see if you guys, oh, yeah, no sim, there you go. Can you see that? All right, so, and just to prove it, I will dial, uh oh, there right, it goes, all right. Yeah, you got the IMEI. All right, so now for the real test. Uh, voice memo app. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. I'm gonna turn up the volume. It was actually all the way down. Testing, testing, one, two, three. 
The ear speaker is very low, and I bet you I know why. Some ear gunk. Oh, you guys can't see that. Some nasty. Literally clogged with face grease. Uh, so yeah, let me let me clean that too. All right, let me uh. Yeah, I always, um, when I play back a voice memo, what I'll do is, um, get a magnet mat. What I'll do is listen, I put a full volume and then listen to the ear speaker because it does have stereo speakers. So it'll play sound from both uh, the bottom speaker, the loudspeaker and um, the ear speaker. So, all right, so clean out this y'all see that so, all right so basically just try to scrape it away from the inside it's kind of hard to do it from the outside just because I don't know also what I like to do is I'll put put it up against the back and try to blow it through. And then I'll put it up to the light, see if I can see through it. <laughs> so right now I can only see like one little square. So that means it needs more work. Put a few drops right in there. And then try to poke some holes through the mesh. By the way, this is an end user. Uh, they found my, my website and sent me this. So that's why I'm going through the extra steps for this because they're going to get it back fully assembled and stuff like that. Like if it was a, a repair shop, you know, they kind of know how to do that themselves. So that's why they get the B2B discount price. All right, so I'm just going to blow some... Uh, the mat, are you talking about the the mat work mat I'm working on? That's just an Amazon baking mat. Uh, I think I have it on my on my website. Uh, go to socaldigitalrepair.com slash gear. Uh, it's all, there's a link in the comments somewhere if you scroll up. See, clean the ear speaker mesh piece. Yeah, I don't have any of that stuff. Also, like to oh man, this is my exacto blade. I'm just kind of. This is like all your face grease from you're like on the phone. You're sweating. Then it solidifies. By the way, you only need to do this section. The rest is, there's no ear speaker there, so. So funny because sometimes it'll it'll sound like static like you wouldn't think this face grease will make static sounds but then you clean it out and then it's like there you go and you guys see um, uh, I'm trying to how can I show this Yeah, it made a, there you go. You guys can see that.
Oh yeah, it's good now. Faster to replace it. Well, I don't have replacements. <laughs> I'm trying to be green over here, you know. I'm not trying to create more waste. All right, let me. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm pretty much done. Um, I don't know if you guys want to watch me screw this camera back in. Yeah, let me see. Maybe tomorrow I'll do another live stream. Um, is there anyone watching who doesn't micro solder? It seems like most of you guys here do. Well, yeah, I mean, we're pretty much good to go. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, I don't know what to say. I guess goodbye. See you guys next time. Like my page. Leave comments. Leave me a review. Um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, stuff like that. So, yeah, if you if you want to learn, actually, I do. I am part of the Profixer uh, uh, micro soldering course. Basically, it's a ninety day program where we have an online portal that teaches you, you know, all the fundamentals on micro soldering. And then we have, um, we have two soldering calls a week, like Zoom calls where it's like interactive. We, we go over different topics and then we take, you know, questions and answers. So if you want to learn about, about that, um, uh, comment below, leave, leave a hashtag learn if you want to learn how to solder. I'll uh, I'll tag Ben so he could follow up with you. He'll he'll handle um, you know going over the actual program and the price and all that. So, all right, time for me to go and get back to work. I got a ton of other repairs to get to. So, until next time, peace out.